Does he exactly. want you to read the full thing? Or... Yeah. Oh, because it's like, no one really reads the full research paper. That's just bad time management. Read abstract, read the results. If they're interesting, then read them out. So you need to summarize them? Write a report? Right now, I'm having all the papers are the same thing. Just, just well, yeah. It's all the same. Right now, I'm having all the papers for my intro and what to do, so. Huh? Is that all the topics for the rest of the semester? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, Originally, it was planned for 30 lectures, two meetings per week. <coughs> Methanol? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can have some real fun with methanol. Who is ethanol? I'm ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> you took it first. <laughs> I mean, if I if I really wanted to, I could have put an IPA on. That's more fun. Uh, Sorry, I was about to try. To depending on your interpretation of abbreviation IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, <laughs> one can discriminate whether it is um, a chemist or a drinker. <laughs> Could be India pale ale. I mean, you can drink IPA, I mean, but it, it'll cause you some <laughs> severe toxicity. <laughs> you can rinse it in. Yes, but can you actually can absorb small amounts of alcohol. Yes. So you do actually have to be semi-careful with that. My TA said he uh, it didn't fully dissolve at first. So he kept on adding nitric acid oh God. to the point where he, we asked him. So, how so if you were not uh, perfectly happy with uh, previous homework, this one should be great. This one should make you happy for sure. And um, my handwriting is not perfect, so do not be too excited in the following sense. If you do see. <clears throat> Sloppy symbol like, like this, it should read like 100, not like 400. <laughs> 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 oh, I like that one. <laughs> I, I see an optimist immediately. Oh, no, this time they had to like dissolve it. Trust a bunch of freshmen with like, oh, concentrated nitric acid. Yeah. I don't know, I was like, I was like, oh, uh, what? I'm like, all right. And first of all, I think five of them And it was all in like one post on the nitric acid, except for one vial. And I was like, okay, that was like, oh, just sit here with it, because I don't trust you guys. That could be awesome. No, so Seth kept on adding more and more to the point where Ethan and my partner, we asked him, so how much did you add? He's like, I shit, do so we asked him, can we put that in the lab report? He says, well, I said it. So we're like, okay. <laughs> no, when we, when I did it, I was so scared because I was dissolving in like a test tube. Test tube, these beakers. Well, no, in our, um, for the, like I did a demonstration for like a lot, like oh. one of the first week labs. And so they wanted, it, and they wanted to show all the gas coming off of it. So oh. the test tube held the gas more. And I was so scared it was going to like foam over. It was like 
It was like dissolving fine, and then all of a sudden, oh, it like dissolved. And I was like, <laughs> and they're all like, oh, it's this. Like, oh, don't spill over, don't spill over, don't spill over, don't spill over. I was like, I do not want to clean that. Well, our next lab, it says we're, we want to use the sulfuric acid. All right. Keep coming away. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's like boil until white beans. Oh, in a uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, well. Uh, I feel that week is coming to completion. <coughs> Friday will be very soon. And uh, we do have the important event on Friday, which, uh, again, you are doing it by preview, but it is one of the most important parts of the, of the course, and uh, you will not regret it in, uh, regarding the extra credit grades. So, please plan to email the PowerPoints, the slides for your presentations by midnight of Thursday. It is needed in order to process them, to maybe print them for others to, to read and for having things ready here. Because we have very limited time and we need to present them quickly. So, if you were not in the um, day of votes, if you didn't practice democracy, then uh, you will get a little complicated subject because no one voted for it. Enter. So. Plan on coming to the lab and preparing the subject. Okay. okay. So I I will not change the subjects. They will be as they are written here. Maybe the order can be swapped a little bit for for logical for better logical uh, arrangement. For example, the last one may could be migrated. A little higher up in the list. So please plan on 180 seconds, which is very limited. So if you, uh, it is physically not possible to present more than four slides. So it's a big challenge to you. You our main idea of these presentations is that each person becomes expert in one subject and then shares expertise with others history of success or failures. But even if you are very well prepared and you know what to present, it is a big challenge to squeeze your knowledge into few slides and few words. I cannot break that I do this every time in the, before the lectures, otherwise we would complete the course in two weeks. So it's, uh, you will be champions of squeezing information. And uh, this is a not last time you will see this code. It will be used for uh, little individual research projects in, in the next month. So if you were not among the volunteers who come at uh, Wednesday evenings, the subjects are approximately split onto principles of solving time-dependent genetic equation in discrete representation numerically, Next chapter is a way to analyze and represent the observables that are computed in, in this methodology. And third one is applications of these um, methods to a couple of simple systems. And so that you don't uh, feel yourself blind in the individual projects, the range of practically important systems will be much broader. You will select yourself with uh, some help, what to choose and what to explore with the same plan of knowledge. Uh, on Monday, I plan to announce new homework. And uh, when the notes will be distributed, you will see it, is, it will be less challenging than previous than the previous one. And we will 
pro, uh, if you be due next Friday, you know, 10 days from now, and during the next week, we will focus on, on, uh, on the subject. So if you've been not, well, probably in a natural way, no one will start doing it ahead of time. And <laughs> this, there is nothing wrong with it. So you can wait until Monday and just uh, accumulate your spirit. So who we are, what we are doing, and what is our uh, revision section. <coughs> So we are in the physical chemistry class. The goal is to predict outcome of experiments and observables of several methods to characterize molecules and materials. We got the fundamentals of quantum theory, and we are getting more and more fundamentals as we go. And we are applying it first to simple systems, and there is a hope that before the semester ends, we will apply it to some practical. So we are done with uh, particle without any potential, particle in the square box of uh, any realistic dimension. So we are not considering four or five dimension. And uh, right now we are analyzing if any quantum features affect vibrations of molecules and other systems that exhibit <laughs> vibrations near the equilibrium. One of the questions to the homework that will be in the far future is give the list of all uh, systems that exhibit oscillatory behavior. And we went through metal plasmons, of course, protons and any molecules that vibrate for infrared spectroscopy. What else did we count it? Like radio receiver, one can make a potential for electron to, to uh, oscillate. And there is a one important example. For those who have a physics minor or major, if you look on the laser, then it is electromagnetic wave which is confined, same as our electron is confined. And it has limited number of uh, maximum nodal points inside between the resonators of the laser. And the amplitude of electric field, there are changes in time in a harmonic wave. So in some sense, one can consider the amplitude of electric field inside laser resonator as another harmonic wave. It is very far from chemistry, but Almost everything in this world was so it. So it's not a big challenge to give examples of what does was so it. So the, yeah, here are the liberations of over solvents. And if we develop potential energy, which is just squares function around the equilibrium, and we do want to prepare components for our future fun reactions. Our fun reactions will be predicting the time evolution, but before we need eigenstates, eigenfunctions, and some uh, background knowledge of the mechanical knowledge of this quantized oscillator. So we are slowly but surely going through eigenstates. And solving the Schrodinger equation for oscillator is possible through serious expansion, and I intend to share it in the form of handouts, but believe me, it is harder than things that we are doing. And it is less scientifically intuitive. So it, it is just like a solving mathematical problem and waiting, waiting, waiting until one can analyze. In what, what we are doing, we are making a bypass through weather operators. We are doing little small steps and we are able to analyze scientifically what we are getting. So what we are doing is more intuitive and uh, helpful for understanding the, the things that we are describing. Never forget normalization. And um, through philosophy of science, through annihilation of a vacuum, 
we were able to solve this equation and develop the ground state of quantized vibrations, which is a Gaussian wave function with uh, some normalization which uses square root of square root, right? It is good for you if you memorize it, but I can't require it because I, I'm not able to memorize it, but that's not. Now, we are going step by step to get the next states. Through our concept of weather operators, which we composed, and I will review them in a, in a minute, we hoped that applying creation operator to this ground state, we are going to obtain the first excited state. It's very, very simple. Okay. So, last time I was a little lost and I tried to find the logic for exact coefficients in front and uh, um, I decided to check myself after, after our meeting once again. And the, one of the requirements for the weather operators for creation and annihilation is that if we multiply them, creation by annihilation, and multiply by the frequency times Planck constant, it should reproduce the Hamiltonian, it should give energy. And uh, I was making check that square of the coefficient in front of position should give this dimension of uh, energy times uh, the uh, frequency times potential and kinetic potential and for, for the momentum part that it reproduces the uh, kinetic part and one can formulate these operators in several ways which will not affect the way they change wave functions. The only important things are that uh, the proportionality between factor in front of position and momentum is uh, m omega. And the rest of coefficients can be changed without loss, without much loss of generality. What is important and what uh, I can memorize, and I think you can memorize, is that the coefficient in front of so weather operators both of them, are linear combinations of position and momentum operators. Okay. And the momentum operator comes with uh, imaginary unit factor, and when we switch from Annihilation to creation, we swap the sign because we want to, uh, to have it permission conjugate. And uh, one can put factors, all factors, uh, out of brackets, and inside the brackets have only this proportionality and uh, imaginary unit. Also, what one can notice is that if it is little plus here, then there is minus here and opposite. If there is nothing here, there is plus here. So, those are operators that help us to avoid solving complicated differential equations that uh, allow us to um, Simplify mathematical challenge. Later on, we will see that they give a little bit of uh, scientific insight as well. But original goal is to avoid um, hard equations. Okay. So 
what do we do? We hope that acting by the creation operator point to If I go so quick, we will finish two arrows. So if I uh, act with uh, this operator on our ground state, which is goes in, uh, in respect to uh, displacement from equilibrium, then we should get something that is very well expected by all our ellipses in this course that will represent the, the first excited state. So it is the only operation that we are going to, to do today. So we will just, uh, we are going to replace momentum by its definition, which will be first derivative, and then apply first derivative to Gaussian function. That's it. We do not have any more plans for the medium because we are going to have much more stress or pleasure or just intense events for the lab session tonight and your presentations on Friday. So take the route. The momentum is first derivative, right? And if we plug it into there, then the imaginary unit gives factor of minus one and minus one square minus one and then there is one minus that was originally here and another minus from definition of, of uh, momentum so uh, it should change to the plus sign so the factor of mass and frequency time, time frequency times uh, position plus h bar and derivative over over the position. And all factors can be called normalization, and we will take care of them separately. If uh, we are too enthusiastic, we can protest them, but uh, hmm. how do they came with minus? Check once again. Let's come together. What should be the, the sign? So we do have minus here by definition. Then we have minus i from <coughs> Momentum operator, and that's it. What will be saying here? Minus one. Please, please check. Error. Minus. So we do not care much about these factors. We can just uh, put them out of brackets and combine whatever they represent. And now we are taking a derivative of the Gaussian function, right? So there are two terms. In first term, we multiply Gaussian function by a factor mass, frequency, and position. And in second term, we are 
taking derivative. So first term, neither multiplying by a factor nor taking derivative of exponential are changing the exponential. So just to keep shorthand notation, we can keep it uh, outside of, of the brackets. Then factor doesn't change, and taking derivative yields the factor that was in the power of exponential coming up front, and then it is a derivative of r squared, right? What do we see then? Uh, I have a fear, I had a fear that the terms might cancel and we will get zero, which will look very strange. But if you would get zero, it would mean there, there is no excited state. But let's check it carefully. So there is factor two because of derivative. There is factor two from, from the power of exponential. Then there is a Planck constant from definition of operator and from, from the factor. And then see, the terms are the same. M omega position, mass frequency position. But the sign here, minus time minus, gives plus, right? So we can just put factor two at the front. Yeah, very close to moment when we can depart in peace. Normalization times position times E minus R squared. So let's plot this function. How should it look like? You can draw in air. Yeah. So uh, it's product of, of two functions, and we can. So how do we plot functions if you do not have computers? If you if suppose that we live eighty years old or more, when nothing can help us to plot. No, since we are humans and we are plotting for humans. Well, of course, you can tell, uh, take uh, the paper with grid lines, compute, compute by pen and paper value function at, at each point and put points. But it is boring. We, are not, we do not need this precision. It's humans who make images for humans. So we, ju we should catch just major features of the function. And major features of the functions is to identify where the function is zero, where it has maximum, where it has minimum, and where, what else? Zero, maximum, minimum, and which sign does it have? Zero, extrema, and sign. So this can be done by <coughs> multiplying functions, just in our head. So if we draw the phi zero function, this is Mexican sombrero cap, right? So it is zero at minus infinity, zero at plus infinity, and it has maximum at, at zero, right? Then we have the linear function. So it has infinity at infinity, minus infinity at infinity. And we have plus, minus, and it has zero at zero.
So, which points we can place on this graph right away? What will be the... We, we do not need to know much. We know just multiplying anything by zero will be zero. Right? So what will be the value of the resulting function at point zero? Yeah. Good. What will be the value of the <coughs> resulting function at plus infinity? Yeah. What will be the value of resulting function at minus infinity? Yeah. Good. I'm so happy. We have a consensus. Now, what will be the product of one positive function times another positive function from zero to plus infinity? Sign. Positive or negative? Positive. What will be uh, sign of the function in the um, from minus negative minus infinity to zero? Negative. negative. So just you do not need to be very precise again. No? <laughs> <laughs> A little more precise. Let me try once again. Oh, right? Yes. <laughs> so and the approximate area of space where the function is substantially bigger than zero should be should correspond to the same area for the ground state. So I'm gonna try to redraw it. Once again, so it's very close to zero here. Let me make this exercise in the vicinity of zero. So how does it compare to other functions that we know? Well, you know many functions. I'm not challenging your, your knowledge. In the functions that we know and play with in the force, how does it uh, compare to first excited state of the uh, one-dimensional box? Which is... Uh, <coughs> Ground state is half period of sign, and first excited is one full cycle of sign. <coughs> Do you see any correspondence? It's flipped or shifted the phase. Um, there, there will be nothing wrong if we redefine it without flip. So what is different and what is what is similar? That they are constrained? Uh, yes, for, for the box it is constrained. Or it, it is, is, con is constrained more. This one is constrained less because it it, it, yeah. it, it, it approaches zero, but it never is is never literally zero. Okay. At the edges. So it has some slowly asymptotically decaying edges. I was just saying the vast majority of it is. is yeah, majority is very, very, very similar. While for the box, we choose this parameter, and for oscillator, we also choose. Well, we not choose it by free will. It is dictated by the frequency and mass of uh, things that are oscillating. What else? How many nodal points here and there? How many um, places where a function is literally no nodal points where it crosses, not approaches zero but crosses zero? One here, one here, one there. So now let's project it to our memories. Well, again. I'm not looking on, on your memories of the, uh, your whole lives. One of the things in, in the course. Remember Bohr model, momentum, and density of fringes. 
And by the way, someone of you is presenting real and imaginary part of the packet. And then from, from the top of the heaven, it's also connected. So if we have a quantum particle, which is moon, it means the wave has fringes. And the quicker particle is moving, the denser are the fringes. So it crosses zero more and more frequently. If it doesn't cross zero at all, it means it doesn't move. Stay still. If it crosses zero, it means it wants to move. Well, maybe it, it, it wants to move just bouncing back, uh, forcing back between walls. So just looking on this uh, shape of wave function, we can tell that it has some kinetic energy. So this wave is moving, forcing back. Well, the ground state looks like it stays still. And here, same here. So the kinetic energy for the excited state is, is not, not zero. So from this analogy and to, uh, from this connection to our memories, can we expect what will be the next excited state? How many nodal points should it have? Two. Yes. So <laughs> if you're sure about it, you can skip Monday meal. <laughs> we will go, uh, we will take another, we will apply the creation operator once again and get this second state. And we will also work on the uh, normalization carefully. Um, although we didn't hit the limit for today's meeting, it, it will be not possible. It, it will be a little more extensive in time and, and amount of derivations. And it is uh, a little early to finish everything, but a little too late to start a new, new section. So here's a question. Yes. As you said, if it doesn't cross the zero, it doesn't want to move. But when it does cross zero, it, does, it likes to move. So if it crosses zero twice, it, it moves mean? more vividly. Okay. Like the amount of kinetic energy is, is higher. Okay. And um, we already talked about some grammar, and we already modified the functions. Um, there will be a big discovery that I will set up as a discovery, but you probably you all know it that uh, the energy of ground state is one, one half of the frequency. And when we jump to the next step, the, uh, to the next state, the energy will change by uh, frequency times one constant. This result can be obtained both in uh, standard, traditional, canonical way of solving the time independent generated equation for harmonic oscillator, or it can be obtained in our insightful approach, but not immediately. We, we can do it, but let's postpone it a little later. Basically, we will just normalize, make sure that our wave functions are ready to find any observables, and then we will just uh, take expectation value of Hamiltonian if the Bright cat are ground state, or if the bright and cat are first excited, and then we will we will get this result. But now it is too early to go through this uh, uh, derivation step by step. But if we do this offset, like wave function plus energy, then uh, you get the figure that uh, you recognize in hundred percent. Every textbook reproduces it, so it makes offset proportional to energy, and then draws these functions. Whenever I was borrowing time from you, now I'm returning. <laughs> so uh, everyone is invited to uh, visit the lab section this night, from 5 to whatever it takes, hopefully before 7. And I look forward to see your PowerPoint slides in my email box before midnight on Thursday. Meeting is complete. I will stay here to answer any questions.